Hello everyone, I'm Hassan Beg and I graduate research assistant in computer system labs of Chosun University, South Korea. I'm here to uh, demonstrate my master thesis project which is a self-repairing bio-inspired four tolerant FPGA architecture. I have developed a four tolerant FPGA architecture and tested it on XQPV5 board which consists of a Vertex 5 device. I also have developed an external PC software that uh, on LabVIEW platform that is responsible to heal any permanent stacked faults in this FPGA device. This software communicates with this FPGA device through UART interface and identify which part of a FPGA die consists of an error. It then downloads a partial bit stream only to that particular area to reconfigure that. So let me begin with my demonstration. The system should have fault tolerant and self repairing capabilities in order to make sure that it is working properly in any hostile environment where its functionality can seriously be affected by the radiations present in the environment. Radiations in the environment can affect the functionality of a circuit. Single event effect occurs when a charged particle present in the environment hits the silicon, transferring enough energy in order to provoke a fault in the system. Single event effect can have te temporary or a permanent effect depending on the amount of energy transferred by the charged particles. In order to keep these programmable devices operational in such hostile environment where the human intervention for maintenance and repair is impossible, a promising fault tolerant and a self-healing reconfigurable architecture is considered necessary. The fault tolerant mechanism of a living organism inspired us to develop a fault tolerant FPGA architecture. The biological tissue in a human body is composed of a group of cells together which carry out a specific function. Each cell is made up of several organelles like mitochondria, ribosomes, nucleus, etc. The cell's nucleus contains chromosomes made from long DNA molecules. DNA is further divided into a group of nucleotide sequences called genes. The genes that have same DNA sequences are termed as paralogous genes, which generally performs the same function. So for example, out of two paralogous genes A and B, if A goes faulty, then B takes over the functionality immediately. If both A and B is faulty, then cell dies. The cellular differentiation process of stem cells then comes into an action to recover the faulty cells. We have employed the same approach here to develop a fault tolerant FPGA architecture in which the computation tile corresponds to a human biological tissue with the number of computation cells in it. Original and spare function plays a role of paralogous genes here and the stem cells serves the purpose of biological stem cells to take over the functionality of permanent faulty cells. In our architecture, each computation tile has its own dedicated stem cell. The most complex thing in any FPG device is its routing network, which occupies 80 to 90% of FPGA area. And to propose a new FPGA architecture means to keep all the routing issues in mind while developing a new FPGA architecture. It is also difficult for the commercial FPG vendors to refine the existing routing architecture according to the newly proposed fault tolerant capabilities. This arises the need to develop such a design that can be incorporated with the existing routing network. These facts led us to invent a generic fault tolerant FPGA computation cell that can be arrayed over the whole FPGA device. Unlike previously proposed architecture, this one can not only be implemented on the existing island style FPGA architecture, but can also be able to fabricate entirely as a new device utilizing the existing routing network strategies. This is the performance comparison chart of our implemented architecture with that of recently developed ones. It can easily be noticed that our architecture is far much better than others in many ways. We have tested our proposed architecture on XQPV5 board as mentioned earlier. Our application consists of 8 different functions, all of which works together to perform LED shifting operation. 
four functions have been placed in one computation tile and the remaining four in another tile. This application uses eight general purpose onboard LEDs to demonstrate the results of error induction and its healing. This is the function flow diagram of our test application. Here the input generator continuously generates a sequence of 0, 1, 2, 3 and then again 0 with the delay of 0.25 seconds. This sequence is wired at the inputs of all the cells of both the tiles. Thus for the viewers, it becomes a LED shifting application which performs a continuous left shift operation on tile 1 LEDs and that of right shift operation on tile 2 LEDs. We have employed a differential based partial reconfiguration techniques to induce errors in any particular cell. With the help of this technique, one can change the contents of any specific LUT without interrupting other ongoing processes. Here is my project demonstration video. Let me first turn on the board. Now I have to download the full video stream to reconfigure the whole device with the application that we want to run. VGA. Let me press it, the full video stream. Okay. What it does is actually download the full video stream to reconfigure the whole of the device and it takes almost 10 to 9 seconds to reconfigure. So it's now reconfigured and you may notice that full bit stream dot bit is downloaded and it took almost 9 seconds to, to reconfigure. So since the full bit stream is downloaded and the uh, LEDs are shifting left and right so let me first introduce a temporary error in cell 1 of tile 1 and cell 2 of tile 2. Okay, as you may notice that this bit is downloaded in 0 second and you can also see that the functionality is not affected because the spare cells immediately take over the functionality of the original 40 cells. Now first I have to retrieve the original functionality back again in order to test the other erroneous conditions. So you mean see that the retrieve original bit is downloaded, it's a partial bit and it's downloaded in 0 seconds. Alright, so let me introduce the permanent error in cell 1 of tile 1 which is uh, stuck at one fault in the cell 1 of tile 1. You may notice that the cell 1 is stuck at 1 and it immediately is reconfigured. So the LED showing the tile 1, uh, tile one is erroneous but it is, its functionality is taken over by these 10 cells. So here this LED also shows that the T1 has, a, uh, has an error. Okay, let's retrieve the original function back and now download the permanent error C2 T2. And you may notice that the cell 2 has had a z stuck at 0 4 and it was immediately recovered. Okay, let's again retrieve original functionality back. And now let's introduce the error in tile 1 and tile 2 both and see the tile 1 will be healed first and then the tile 2 will heal. Since so because the tile 1 is placed at the left side of the die and tile 2 is on the right side of the die. We also introduce two errors in tile 2 and you will come to notice that, that the, all of the errors will be recovered at once. So here we go. See that the tile 1 is reconfigured and then tile 2 is recovered. So this is how our software and hardware communicates and works. So let me retrieve the original functionality back again. And that's all.